Well, hey friends, it's Merv with my free fix for just about any dishwasher that's not cleaning right. Make sure you watch all these tricks before you spend one dime on repairs that aren't needed. I'm wearing six pair of gloves, 14 pair of safety goggles, and some flesh-colored Kevlar to satisfy the legal department. Do not take off the gloves! The bell's behind the camera. Let's get started. Well, I was going to work around Margie's house like I do every weekend, but Helen got all upset for some reason and jumped on my back about this broken dishwasher. Hope you'll come along for the adventure, because what I'm going to show you is universal, simple, and once you see my trick, you'll realize it only takes about a half hour to do it. First, you need to know this dishwasher is filling and draining properly. If yours isn't, well, I'll cover that in Chapter 2, which means I get to show you the important dishwasher parts most people don't know about. The secret stuff. Safety first, so I always turn off the breaker or unplug the machine. Analysis. I noticed some of the dishes are clean, like this drinking glass here, and some of them were filthy. Plus, I noticed the soap wasn't even dissolving right. So, friend, logic tells us we've got a water flow problem. First, we need to unload it. Then the bottom rack comes sliding right out. And you're going to notice to get the top rack out, there's a little trick. you got to remove these little plugs that are in the end of this slider arm here. It ain't that hard. You just kind of shove it with your thumb and give it a twist. It comes right out. You see, there's a little catch. And you do the same thing on the other side. And it's always good to break them off, I guess. Like I just did. Uh, so uh, that one is pretty much screwed. We're going to put that in a safe place. So once you've done that, you just pull it right out. And you can see down here, if this thing was clean and right, you know, you wouldn't have soap that ain't dissolved. And look, you got debris all over the place. This thing should be shooting water like a fire hose and it clearly ain't doing that. Next comes the bottom spray arm and some machines have a plug that needs to be removed here or a screw that needs to come out. In the case of this GE I just pull up on it gently while unscrewing it off this centerpiece. You see how this spray arm works? It's got a fastener on there, lips that screw down over that center hub. Demille, you getting this? Yeah. Over here? No. How about here? No. Yeah. This one? Yeah. Hmm? No. That one? You got it? Yeah. So it locks down over the top of the big old giant nut. The wash arm retainer nut is what that's called. And the wash arm retainer nut is what comes off next, which allows the fine filter to be removed. Yeah, look at this. This is disgusting. We got soap powder that's all over there and a whole bunch of disgusting stuff that should be coming off if there's enough water flow. And we got a coffee cup handle that Helen threw at me in a drunken rage on a Sunday morning, as I recall, I'm getting ready for church. You never do anything around here. And uh, then we got lots of debris here that shouldn't be. Because your components and things leading to your feed line and your grinder and your waste line and all this stuff's clogged up. So all you really got to do is clean it out. I'm going to show you how. It's easy. Next, it's important to loosen this feed line, which is attached to the back of the machine. Not much effort required. I just use a little six millimeter socket to loosen it. Or you can use a pair of pliers and unscrew it by hand. It needs to be loosened so you can detach it down here. And yeah, just move this little tab. And she's out, which is going to enable us now to monkey with this. Before we take out that threaded center hub, you want to clean her up a bit, especially before you take off this sump cover. It's a strainer that keeps big particles from falling down inside. This sump filter basket is next. There's a lip on this, so we need to get it out of the way so we can remove the big bottom mat known as the coarse filter. So we give this a squeeze and... Yeah. And for those of you who enjoy the excruciating pain of abdominal exercises, you'll 
really enjoy contorting your body over the open door of this dishwasher to do this. Since engineers are cruel, there's release tabs about an inch down inside this filter basket that can only be released by unnaturally spindly fingers, a putty knife, or maybe some dynamite. You see the tabs on the side of the filter basket here? That threaded center hub is next. Whoa, danger! What did I just do there, folks? Careful not to flip this over when you take her out. Because there's a little tiny washer down inside this center spray arm hub. Don't want to lose it. Then the next step is take this mat off. They call it a coarse filter. This trapezoid shaped thing for those of you who are into the geometry hobby. And that's going to enable us to get down underneath, which is where the sump basin is, to collect water for recirculating or draining. I'm going to suck that water out of there. I'm going to suck it out good and let's give her a good wipe down. See, there's lots of undissolved purple stuff here. Hmm. That, folks, is Kirkland dishwasher pods from Costco. Just saying. There, looking better already. So now you can see that hole leads to a collecting basin called the sump. It's made out of molded rubber, and even the pipe that leads to it is made of rubber. Don't ask me why, because mine eventually cracked. You can see how I tried to patch it here. Now pay attention to this part, because it's important to understand what happens in your sump. We even paid top dollar for a fancy animation. See, in wash mode, the water gets sucked through here by a recirculating pump. It goes through a grinder to dice up any small food particles, then it gets blasted back onto your dishes through your spray arms, which is why they eventually clog up. In drain mode, the water exits this way, sucked out by your drain pump. More on this in another video, but I'm always careful about reaching my fingers in there, which is why I make sure the power's disconnected, just to be on the safe side. And when she's washing and rinsing, the recirculating pump shoots the water up through this center hole, which is attached to the spray arms vis-a-vis -vis that feed line. So you can see why it's important to clean up everything real well and make sure nothing is clogged. That's what we're doing. Make sure there's no obstructions under this float switch. It tells the machine when the water reaches a certain level. Now we take out the top spray arm and the middle spray arm, which attaches to your top rack. Time for Merv Surf tip number 17. Take the bit out of one of these reversible screwdrivers most people have around the house, and you've got a nut driver, which makes it easy to remove most of the little mounting screws you'll need to. Now I inspect and wash everything real good. Even take a pick to get lodged particles out of the spray arms. And look what I found in the bottom of my sink after I drained it. That's the washer I told you about. Danger! Don't lose it. From here, it's just a matter of reversing the process. Coarse filter mat, sump filter basket, and cover. Center spray arm hub screws in and joins with the feed line, which gets reattached. Then the fine filter, wash arm retainer nut, and the bottom spray arm on top of that big old giant nut. Top spray arm, middle spray arm, and the top rack with those tricky end caps. Hmm, one of them is uh, broke for some reason. Finally, I roll the bottom rack into position, close the door, then I can get Helen off my back. And if a dishwasher needs more than this, you can join me to examine the dirty underbelly of the beast as you can see in these shameless plugs for our upcoming video. Turbidity, 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 turbidity. But perhaps our adventure ends here, friend. And if so, this is Merv saying, save your money for your kids. Keep life simple, and I'll see you next time. Merv Service Secrets and MervServe.com. Things don't always go smooth, but they always get done. Merv, you're not doing anything stupid, are you? Can you give me five minutes to myself? Please like and subscribe.